Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about uh, how do we find an exponential function? How do we come up with an exponential function from tables and graphs? So uh, first of all, what does an exponential function look like? So an exponential function, uh, just to show you guys a little quick uh, preview on what an exponential function looks like. Uh, it looks like this and there's there are revealed in many forms, but it basically, com basically comes down to the function in terms of x is equal to a times b to the power of x. So what that means is that um, you have a number in front uh, multiplied by a number that is to the power of a variable. Usually a and b are numbers and then x stays as a variable since you want a function. Um, it stays in terms of the variable x. Uh, now the number in the front, variable a or term a I should say, um, is the y-intercept, which is where x is equal to zero. Really important here when you're looking at, uh, you know, how do we identify, how is this helpful to our graph? Um, you have to know that it is, a is the y-intercept, and it's also known as where x is equal to zero. Um, this is also useful when we have tables. Uh, if we know that, that the y-intercept is where x is equal to zero, we just have to find where x is equal to zero to figure out what the y-intercept is. B is called the base. Uh, in any math book you look at, uh, it's called the base which is, in other words, the multiplicative factor, which is the number that you're multiplying or dividing by, basically. Now, if you're multiplying, it's going to be a whole number. If you're dividing, it's going to be a fraction because the, the number will actually be getting smaller and smaller. So, again, multiplying by a fraction is the same thing as dividing. Okay, let's do a couple of examples real quick. Uh, I have example one, two, and three, and then we'll do a couple more uh, that have to do with graphing. So, in example one, two, and three, uh, we need to figure out What's going on in the pattern with these functions? Uh, we have three examples. If we look at the function values, so for example, number one, uh, three turns into nine, nine turns into 27, 27 turns into 81. So if you stop and look at these numbers for a second, it looks like you're actually multiplying by a constant amount. Uh, three times three would give you nine, nine times three would give you 27, 27 times three would give you 81. So it's safe to say that we're actually multiplying by three for the first one. So I'm gonna write multiply by three. Um, since we know that's our multiplicative factor, uh, now all we need to do is figure out, hey, where, where could I find um, my y-intercept? Where is x equal to zero? So if you look at the graph, or sorry, not the graph, if you look at the table in this case, uh, x is equal to zero here at this value, and the value of the function becomes positive three. So Using what we know of uh, the function, right? A goes in the front, it's where x is equal to zero. B is the multiplicative factor, which is what we're multiplying by each time. And then it's always gonna be an x, so, because we want a function, so it's gonna be to the power of um, x. So the first example, example number one, the function would be, I'm gonna write it, where can I squeeze it in? I'll write it on the bottom. So it'll be f of x, let me use blue. f of x is equal to a, which happens to be three in this case times b, which also happens to be three, to the power of x. Okay, so the first one is done. Again, if you're wondering where I got these numbers from, three is where x is equal to zero, b is the number that you're multiplying by, and this is the power of x. Okay, next one. Let's do another example real quick. So uh, what is the function in this case, for example, number two? Well, let's look at the pattern. Uh, we have one that turns into two, two, two turns into four, four turns into eight. So in this case, we're actually multiplying by two. One times two is two, two times two is four, four times two is eight. So I'm gonna write multiply by two. Um, now we just need to find where x is equal to zero. That's way at the bottom in this table. So if we go to where x is equal to zero in this table, that's down here. And that value of the y-intercept or the a would be equal to eight. So putting it all together, since I already know my formula for an exponential function, um, it's going to be f of x. Uh, let me write it up here because pretty tight squeeze. So the formula for example two would be f of x is equal to a which happens to be 8 in this case times b which happens to be multiplied by 2 so it's going to be a 2 to the power of x. Again the 8 came from the y-intercept and then the 2 is the number that you're multiplying by each time. Okay so 8 parentheses 2 to the power of x. Okay example number 3 same idea. So what's happening each time with this function? So one turns into five, five turns into 25, 25 turns into 125. So in this case, if you pay close attention, it looks like we're multiplying by, by five each time, right? One times five is five, five times five is 25, 25 times five is 125. 
So now we just got to find where x is equal to zero. Well, if you go to where x is equal to zero, next to that number, the value of the y-intercept would be equal to five for this particular exponential function. So we would write the final function, uh, I'm going to do it below, f of x is equal to a, which is five, times b, which happens to be multiplied by five, so I'm going to write a five in here, and then that will be to the value, to the power of x, excuse me. So five parentheses, five to the power of x. Okay. Um, hopefully that is clear. Uh, example four and five. Let's let's try to get let's try to get some of them that are, that happen to be uh, fractions because we haven't had any division ones so far. So example four and five. Let's do some different ones. Uh, notice that um, these uh, tables are actually sideways. So again, if you're looking at tables that are sideways or or vertical or however you want to call it, um, it's going to be always from the negative numbers to the positive numbers. So in this case, it would be from left to right. Um, if we're looking at the top tables, so it's going to be from the top to the bottom. We're going from, from uh, the lowest numbers to the highest numbers. So in this case, it would be from left to right. That being said, uh, I'm going this way. So if I am going this way, this actually is uh, multiplying again. Oh, great. Multiplication. Um, so 4 times what will give me 12, 12 times what will give me 36, 36 times what will give me 108. So in this case, um, if you're doing multiplication, uh, that value would be multiply by 3. And x equals 0 here. So overall, if we have the function here, the function relationship, it would be a, which is 36, times b, which happens to be 3 to the power of x. Okay, um, so hopefully this, this makes sense as of right now. I was actually looking forward to do one uh, that was a fraction and I'm looking at the example number five and example number five is not gonna be a fraction. It's not going to be a fraction, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this problem altogether so I can give you guys uh, a fraction to work with. So I'm gonna just copy this problem down again real quick. So example number five, um, but I do want to give you guys an example in which you have division rather than multiplication. That way you guys can see the difference. So I'm going to leave the numbers the same, negative one, zero, one, two, but I'm going to make the 192 be on this side and then the 48 be here, the 12 be here, and the three be here. So this will be our example number five, just so I can illustrate um, what happens when you actually have division instead of multiplication. So example number five will be this one. Now, again, I'm going from left to right, right, from lowest numbers to highest numbers. As you can see in this case, we're actually getting smaller uh, in terms of quantity. 192 turns into 48, 48 turns into 12, 12 turns into 3. Uh, if you notice, in this case, we're not multiplying. We're actually dividing by 4, right? If you divide this number by 4, you get that number. If you divide that number by 4, you get this one. This divide this by 4, you get this one, etc. Now, the only thing that changes when you're dividing by 4 instead of multiplication is that the function f of x equals a, which is where x equals 0, like we said for all the other examples, this is still, this is still going to give you 48. Um, b would be the multiplicative factor, which is whatever you're multiplying or dividing by. Now, in this case, since we're dividing by 4, I'm not going to write a 4 in here because 4 would mean that I'm multiplying by 4. If I want to write divide by 4, uh, I'm actually going to put it as a fraction as 1 over 4 which if you remember one over four means one divided by four. So what that means is you're multiplying every number times one, which doesn't change it, and then you divide it by four. So if you just remember when you're dividing, you're gonna have a fraction, um, then you should be fine. The number is still the same quantity, it's just basically gonna turn into a fraction. Okay, finally, um, we have graphs. So now let's say, for example, we have some graphs and you wanna figure out, hey, what is the function that goes along with this graph? So Again, the rules don't change. It's going to be the same function. Uh, we have a times b to the power of x, right? So that's the y-intercept. That's whatever we're multiplying or dividing by. Now let's look at the graph real quick. So if we find, to find the y-intercept, we go to the y-axis and then highlight the y-axis. If you notice, the y-intercept inter here is actually going to be touching at the number 6. So we know right away that a equals 6. So that's not very hard to find. Uh, we're done with that. The b is the one that's a little trickier to find. We have to figure out exactly what it is that we're multiplying by. So for that, we need to look at the numbers uh, itself. So we have a dot here at 6, right? This is where the graph touches. And then that 6 turns into an 18. 
Okay, and there's a dot here. And that 18 turns into a 54. So you can see uh, if I put dots right at the perfect intersections, uh, that this is actually multiplying by three, right? Six times three is 18. 18 times three is 54. Now I'm looking at this going every single unit to the right. So I'm starting here at x equals zero, and then I move on to x equals one and look at the graph. Then I move on to x equals two and look at the graph. I move on to x equals three and look at the graph. Anyways, point is we're multiplying by three. So b equals three because we are multiplying by three. Uh, put it all together to find the function or the exponential function, I should say. Uh, f of x is going to be equal to a, which is 6, times b, which is 3, to the power of x. So we just got to put it all together. So that goes there. This goes on the outside. So you guys are used to it. And that is that. Uh, lastly, if we have something that looks like this, which I know came out really ugly because I used a Sharpie. Don't judge me. Moving on. Um, so same idea. We're going to highlight the y-axis, and if you notice, the y-axis is going to be touching here, which uh, I was hoping that it was more clear, but I'm going to go ahead and just say that it's an 8. So I'm going to say that a is equal to 8 because it touches the y-axis at 8. Uh, and now we just have to find what's going on with the graph. If you notice, from left to right, it's getting smaller. So we're not going to be multiplying this time. We're actually going to be dividing by a number. Uh, what number are we dividing by? Well, that's uh, that's going to be the tricky part. So let's look at the graph. So if this touches at, let's see. Hmm, it looks like it touches nicely here. So that value of the graph would be a 2. Okay. And then it looks like it touches nicely here. That value of the graph would be at 8. And then it looks like it touches nicely here. That value of the graph would be at 16. So it's right next to it. I'm just writing it so you can see it uh, clearly. So 2 turns into 8. 8 turns into 16. 16, I'm assuming on the next one over, turns into 32 way up there, which is out of my graph. Point is, um, uh, I, I know some of you guys might want to say that you're, uh, you're multiplying by 4, right? So 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 4, uh, I'm sorry, um, 2 times... Jeez, this is exactly why it came out pretty terrible because I used a Sharpie and it didn't come out nice. Great. So let's see, let's see. How can we fix this appropriately? Okay, just for kicks and giggles, we're going to pretend that this is perfectly a 4, just so I can bring the point across. Um, so I know that it's not a 4. My graph came out terrible. Okay, anyways, let's not talk about that. <laughs> so 4 turns into an 8, 8 turns into a 16, so it, it seems like you're multiplying by 2, but if you notice, you, you're supposed to read the graph from left to right, like a book, right? From left to right, lowest numbers to highest numbers. So this is actually not going to be getting bigger, it's going to be getting smaller. So for that, we established it on this example, right? When it's getting smaller, it's going to be division, so we're going to be saying that it's going to be divided by 2 rather than multiply by 2. So when we write b, b we won't actually write 2, Kind of like example number five that I wrote down here, we would have write one over two because we're actually dividing. Now, if you ignore the terribleness of this graph um, and just look past that, you'll notice that the value of the function is the same. So a goes on the outside, b goes on the inside, one over two, and then that'll be to the power of x. Okay, so that is how you convert from a table or a graph to an exponential function. Okay, I hope this was helpful. You guys have a good one. See you guys in class.